Hey folks, Matt from IreTheImage.com. We've got Deepak writing in here. This is an email. Uh, and he's writing him some questions, mostly looks like about video. He says, hello, greetings from India. I love your videos and a huge fan of yours. Need some help. Looked all over YouTube and internet, pretty much confused. I basically shoot music videos. Currently, I own a Nikon D5200 and a 35F18G. I've been using this for two years and now looking for a new camera that supports 4K. Brackets, do I need 4K? Does 4K mean more sharpness on your video? My budget is still tight, around 1000 to 1500 and I've found Panasonic G7, Canon M50, and the Sony A6500. Help, uh, help me, uh, I think, it, oh, helpful for me, oh, helpful for me, on the other hand, I'm looking to buy a three-axis gimbal to get more cinematic shots with my existing camera setup. To be shot, I have four questions. Uh, I need sharp video. Do I need to buy a 4K camera? If yes, please do suggest that uh, some that are good light uh, uh, that are good for low light too. Uh, shall I buy a DJI Mavi Air footage and combine that with my current setup to get some aerial shots, or shall I wait for a year or so and then go for a Sony A7 III mirrorless? I need to produce great music videos. Do share your tips and suggestions. Sorry for my crappy English and overloaded questions. Thanks, Deepak. Actually, your English seems quite good, Deepak. Um, and um, probably much better than my Indian would be. Uh, anyways, uh, let's address your first question. Sharp video 4K. My easy answer is yeah. Um, even if you export to 1080, you're going to get better looking, sharper, better res 1080. It's just the way it works. you got a power file and you're reducing it. And then, of course, 4K does give you, if you export in 4K, even if you're watching it in 1080 or lower res, you're getting a sharper image because you've got better resolution. And I think most people that have shot 4K video would agree with me on that. Although, folks, feel free to chime in the comments below if you don't think so, but back it up. What do we have next? Uh, do I suggest uh, some cameras that are for low light too? Uh, the G7 is a great camera. It's very economical now. You can pick it up for under $500. I shot with it for a long time before I switched to the G85, what I'm shooting with right now, which I really like too. Um, GH4, not a bad deal. They're higher end pro level, just one model behind. Maybe you could get a GH5 used for that. Uh, really like the Canon M50, great camera. Um, don't know, I guess it depends what you're shooting. Uh, very good camera, very good for low light. APS-C, so a little bit bigger sensor than a Micro Four Thirds. Um, in 1080, you definitely have the advantage of the dual pixel autofocus there, which is better than the Panasonic's at the moment. Um, so I do like the Canon M50. You do have that heavy crop factor in 4K, but not that big a deal. Plus, you got access to all the beautiful Canon lenses if you use an adapter, like the Velo or the Canon M adapter, which are both very good. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem with the M50. Uh, Sony A6500, not a bad camera. Um, don't necessarily like the lens line up there. That's the big caveat I always say with Sony is I'm not a big fan. Basically, they don't have a lot of good budget-friendly lenses. They got some good lenses, but you're going to pay a premium, which makes the whole setup more expensive. So that's why I personally steer a little bit clear of Sony. Although we do have the new Sigma uh, Sony mounts announced. So that might be the way to go, an A6500 with Sigma lenses. Um, so I like all those options that you've got there. The caveat or what I would say is get them in your own hands. Get to the store, play with them, see what you think. Maybe there's something more ergonomically that's going to sway you. Maybe there's a placement of a button that you just hate. So it's going to make you, you thought you might like one and you ended up going for the other. So play with them. Out of those three that you're suggesting, I like the G7 and the M50. And then it's just a question of what you like better. Right now... I might be swayed to the M50 because I really like that camera, uh, but not a knock on the G7 at all. If the price was a huge difference, I'd probably go G7. Really like the G85 too that I'm shooting with right now, the successor to the uh, G7. So those are the ones I would look at. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, DJI Mavi Air footage. Always great in video to add some aerial um, you know, look at the Casey Neistat, and lots of people are just copying him. You got lots of aerial footage with drones. It's a good idea. Uh, whether you choose that one or not, I'm not a big expert on drones. I think DJI makes some really good stuff, so I wouldn't have a problem with you getting that. But I'm uh, maybe. You know what? I'll throw that back to our viewers. What would you guys get? Do you agree with the DJI Maverick for air footage, or would you go with something else? Leave that in the comments below. Let's help them out here. Uh, and then the last question, or the fourth question, shall I wait for a year or so and then go for a Sony a7 III mirrorless? I wouldn't. I'd get shooting today. You wait a year or so, you that's a year you've wasted that you could have been producing, building up your skills, building up your portfolio, maybe building a YouTube channel. I, I would get shooting now. I don't, I don't ever like waiting for later. Uh, you can always buy an a7 III later.
and you need to uh, produce great music videos so share your tips and suggestions well um, you know that's a whole I would say that's probably a whole other video we could get into all sorts of things for tips and suggestions some fast primes you know get something equivalent to a fast 50 um, works great on the M50 and something like maybe the 42.5 F17 on the Panasonics um, That'll give you some separation of background. That'll give you low light, um, some wide angle, and learn to use your lighting. Lighting is so important. So then that's a whole other video, a whole other course we could do on that. So I'm, that's uh, my suggestions. I'm going to throw that back to our viewers, not just on uh, the one I've already thrown back at you about the uh, the drone, but what, what camera would you go to in this situation? Which one would you buy and why? Let's uh, help out Deepak. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, and to all his questions, let us know what you think. Um, and as far as the, uh, I guess the question too was, which ones are the best of those for low light? Probably the M50 is the best out of there for low light. Probably the 6500 as well. But again, I wouldn't go with that one necessarily unless maybe I was just looking at Sigma lenses. Um, I think the Canon M50 is probably the best bet out of all those for low light as far as an everything as far as why I like it the most. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Help out Deepak. Always great to hear from you guys. Get some other input. Rounds out the um, the answers for our viewers when they write in with a question on what to buy here because, you know, it can be daunting buying photography equipment. Thanks for your question, Deepak, and stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.